Hello, this is Smita Kumar and you're watching Medi Circle. On 10th of October, we celebrated World Health Metal Day and with the problems, it's especially people uh, identifying yes and accepting that they are having some mental uh, issues and now openly talking about it, it's, it's really a welcome change. The way uh, it is very much common and easily acceptable in the Western countries, India, in India it's still a taboo. We don't talk about openly about our mental stress or any such disorder or any such condition. Uh, we are not opening up even to our friends and families. But yes, we definitely have a lot of mental health care startups in India today who can uh, definitely uh, extend a helping hand because it's really, really needed. And uh, today we are also talking to some uh, such uh, healthcare startups who are definitely doing a very good job in the field of mental health care. So today the guests for the show are Yash Manhotra and Shivani Kananda, the other co-founders of Mimblu, which is a Mumbai-based mental health care startup which offers asynchronous text-based therapy on its app through certified therapists. Mimblu also enables users to consult mental health care therapists through either chat or by sharing voice notes or via video calls, whatever is possible. And that can be also scheduled as for the convenience and their availability. So let's know more about it. Hello, Yash and Shivanika. Welcome to MediCircle. Thanks, Smita, for having us. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Smita. So as we uh, discussed that, yes, uh, there is a lot of uh, mental health, uh, burden of mental health problems. Like WHO also estimates this burden in India to be of 2,443 disability adjusted life years. That is GALYs for 1 lakh population. The age adjusted suicide rate also for 1 lakh population is 21.1. The economic loss due to mental health conditions between 2012 and 2030 is estimated at USD 1.303 trillion dollars. That's that's quite huge. So, as the co-founders, you started something in the mental health care space. Do let us know what was the reason behind it and how you are actually trying to help those people. Definitely, were not opening up initially. So that's that's completely a mind change for those people who are not opening up. So what were the challenges and how you started? Yeah, great. Thank you for the question. So um, we've been working on this for more than a year now. Um, I think the challenges really started to shine through around COVID times, right? Um, I was speaking to a couple of uh, my friends and uh, I think with lockdown, uh, a lot of the issues that have already already in there they kind of, kind of started to bubble up to the surface and when i was speaking to a couple of friends who were dealing with their own personal issues um my immediate advice was you know seek professional help and i've done therapy for anxiety myself it's made a positive a hugely positive impact on my life so i'm a big proponent of therapy so when i spoke to you know a couple of my friends they, they both individually had the same exact response which is ha theek hai dekhte hai, let's see and for me that just like why would you not see i mean if you uh, you know, have injured your leg, you'll go to a doctor tomorrow to get that fixed. So why would you not, uh, you know, go go speak to a professional? And that's kind of when, uh, you know, I realized that uh, a, a big problem was not just, uh, you know, accessibility to therapists, which has already existed, but also people didn't know how to take that first step, right? If I want to see a therapist uh, tomorrow, what do I do? Do I Google therapists near me? Do I ask my friends and family for recommendation? And even then, as you rightly pointed out earlier, right, there is some level of stigma that exists across all strata of society. So uh, I spent a lot of time reading clinical research papers around accessible formats of therapy. And one paper which spoke about asynchronous text therapy really stuck out to me. And that's the format and that's the pillars on which we've built uh, Mimblu, because what we are using is actually a clinically proven format of therapy uh, and we are applying it on our platform. So we don't want to kind of enter, you know, this space because it's a sensitive space. So we want to make sure that we are building something that has depth to it and that is actually accepted and is proven to work more than anything else. So yeah, so that's been our journey. Shivantika has been working with us for the past couple of months. So Shivantika, if you want to, you know, share a little bit more about that as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I first, first, um, 
joined Memlu as a therapist, I was um, I wasn't very sure about sort of what well, I don't I wouldn't say not sure, but I don't think I fully understood the capacity of a platform like. Memlu. I think that it's very freeing for both the clients and the therapist. You know, the, the text-based format um, makes it very easy for a client who is especially for the first time in therapy, um, you know, to, to start to open up because I think there's an added layer of being anonymous as well as, you know, in COVID times, the other big thing that happened, we as therapists realized was that a lot of people were struggling to do sessions from home because there isn't as much privacy. You know, people can hear you, family members can hear you, everyone's at home. And now that sort of being at home, virtual culture has kind of, you know, it's here to stay. So I think what Mimblu also offers there is is the ability to sort of break out of those restrictions. Uh, and and I think once I, I joined as a, as a therapist, I realized how amazing it is even for the therapist because it allows them to feel quite empowered in terms of, you know, their earning capacity, as well as just the number of hours they have more to themselves in a day. Uh, Mimlu is quite an interesting name. So any specific reasons uh, naming such behind your startups? Uh, I'll, I'll be very frank with you. There is really no deep meaning to Mimblu, which I can share with you. Uh, see, I think the goal when we set out to name the platform was there's so there's as you mentioned, right? There's stigma attached to mental health. So why not give it a name that frees itself of the stigma? That's easy to kind of rolls off the tongue, and uh, you know, kind of. Uh, speaking about who our audience is as well right most of our audience is gen z or millennials more gen z uh, slightly less of millennials and for them we wanted to have something that is more approachable the format is approachable it's text it's via an app they love it uh, the name is also approachable so we kind of had that segue into naming memblu as well and uh... Uh, like as there are other healthcare, mental healthcare startups also like Wiser is there, Inner Arbor is there. Yes. So what is yeah. the prime USPs of building MIM yeah. so that there is yeah. a complete differentiator in terms of uh, approach? Yeah. Definitely it's, it's a very, uh, uh, again, people need, I mean, it's, uh, privacy. That's uh, as yeah. uh, uh, Shivanika added because again, opening up to a stranger, it's really difficult. Yeah. And you are not able to open up to your own family and friends. So this might be definitely a challenge. So what were the USPs that you started with and still maintain? I think uh, primarily it's firstly the format that we're using. Uh, there's really nobody in India uh, or in this landscape uh, that's using asynchronous text therapy. And we're very much doubling down uh, on that for uh, some of the reasons which Shivantika already mentioned in terms of how it's helping users. Um, for example, I was speaking to one of our users for feedback and they were telling me that they weren't able to do any other format of therapy because of the lack of space that they had, but they were able to sit next to their parents around dinner time while texting their therapist, which was a completely new concept altogether, right? So for us, A, the format, and B, uh, I think Shivantika can speak a little bit more about this. We are very much a therapist-led platform. Yeah, so... You know, I mean, as a, as a therapist, it's quite a lonely profession. You know, you you work out of your home or your office. You don't get to, you don't have any colleagues. You don't get to become friends with your clients. So, you know, for therapists as well, it's a very, very lonely sort of world out there. And, you know, you go on practicing like that for like 20, 30, 40 years. So what we're also trying to do is build, you know, not trying to do, but doing is building a very therapist driven community um, where we're providing them this sense of community and peer learning through the other therapists on our platform. We're also giving them these opportunities to upskill and learn more because it's also such a new field. Um, you know, you can't really um, go and, and, and study in college or school or, or, or any other, you know, course that you can do to really understand what asynchronous text therapy is like. It's a very, very new field. So in, in order for us to grow and be good at what we do, the best way we can do it is just learning from each other. So we're also really focusing on building that peer network. Now, as for the statistics, uh, which I would like to share here, because as you said that uh, there are very young uh, people who are experiencing uh, mental health conditions and where they definitely need uh, support 
where they can actually talk to a professional and get their query sorted. So, like one in every five individuals in India actually suffer from some form of mental health illness and symptoms. That means uh, there are, uh, and the symptoms can include a lot of things like depression, anxiety, the eating disorders, and stress. And sometimes there are very severe mental health illnesses also, like schizophrenia is there, bipolar diseases, clinical depression, societal tendency, personality disorders. So by uh, here, I would like to add this fact that it's, it's, it's very, very worrisome. 50% of the mental health conditions begin by the age of 14 and 75% of the mental health conditions develop by age 24. So if you talk about uh, your... Uh, I mean, people to whom you have approached and given a good comfort and a support to come over and uh, experience new things in life and move more over, especially get a good support and uh, help from a professional, which means a complete difference in approaching things. So what's your, uh, I mean, the volume which you have touched so far with your services, also being text-based, as it definitely uh, helps with the privacy thing. But are every I mean, there are a lot of people who are not very comfortable with typing also. So was it a challenge anyhow, any uh, any time? I think uh, with our audience, as I mentioned, our audience is primarily within the younger demographic, right? So the adoption to text is just second nature to them. Text is for them the easiest format of communication they would much rather text rather than do a phone call or a you know video call so for us i think in terms of adoption it's 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 been absolutely easy in that sense i think the other uh, you know great thing about gen z is they have a lot less stigma than you know um, even to a certain extent millennials or you know gen x or boomers right they are very much more willing and much more accepting of mental health as you know a conversation uh, more than anything else and you know uh, kind of speaking to some of the statistics that you were mentioning it's uh, all these statistics are actually pre covid data as well you know that's it's 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 crazy that we don't have more data on uh, how the country is doing mentally uh, you know post covid because uh, pre covid of course we know that more than 200 million odd indians suffered from some form of uh, you know, mental health disorder and uh, you know addressing to that 50 percent of them are actually just anxiety and depression right 50 percent of them and slightly over 50 percent are just behavioral wellness and that's where mimblu comes in so mimblu is very much focused on behavioral wellness which is um, you know focusing on anxiety depression stress that kind of stuff we're definitely not a psychiatry platform we don't provide medication because those require very uh, different kinds of interventions um so yeah, so for us, we're very confident with the demographic uh, that we have. We've uh, already had over 10,000, uh, you know, chat conversation, chat sessions on the app uh, since launch. So we are uh, in the format times, we're very in, in the format aspect, we're very much doubling down on, uh, you know, how we're going so far. Uh uh, as you just mentioned about the statistics, definitely I would like to add some facts here. Yeah. And there is definitely a lack of help. Like we have just 43 state-run mental health institutions across the country. And the and that means that is only one psychiatrist for four black Indians. That is, and only 1,022 colleges seats for mental health professions are set aside in India. So uh, the ratio is also very worrying that there are less psychiatric social workers against this huge population. Also one important factor that there is no insurance for the mentally ill. Like insurance companies do not provide any medical insurance to the people who are admitted to hospitals with mental illnesses. So these are some of the factors that actually aggravates this uh, condition. Uh, condition of a mental uh, pandemic that is it's there pre -COVID. it was definitely there pre-covid but i think post-covid people have started accepting it and now some uh, people have started openly talking it because i think it's it's completely a change of mindset that we need to have in the people that they first start speaking up opening up with their queries um i hope definitely you guys also feel the same because you are talking to gen your new generation people at the same time we have some illnesses there is a lot of factors i think peer pressure is there 
uh, can you just sum up uh, with your experience what are the main reasons of uh, mental uh, these kind of mental health conditions that you are experiencing with your uh, customer base um so i mean i i don't think that there's we can we can necessarily because i think when you seek mental health support it can be for any reason at all right ranging from something serious like as you mentioned anxiety depression bullying peer pressure to some just needing somebody to talk to and our approach is also very much as we mentioned because it's about behavioral wellness it also is for people who maybe aren't struggling at all but just want to improve their quality of life you know so maybe they want to build better habits maybe they want to be- build better routines maybe you know uh they just want to keep their mental health in check so we have had on the platform we've had a range of different people come from di- with different challenges from you know um family issues relationship issues stress management work life balance issues um you know and of course the anxiety the depression the adhd uh which are more sort of clinical in in nature than the rest of it yeah and i think uh, just to kind of add to what shivantika said is that there's always one thing that you know i as an individual can think i'm dealing with but when i actually speak to the therapist i find out okay it was completely something different and that is where you know a lot of our therapist training and why we focus on quality of therapist uh on the platform as well because folks come in thinking i have i'm dealing with this particular issue but when it turns out it's a whole different thing and and just to give you statistics more than half of our users uh getting onto the platform i i would say more than i would 60% of our users coming onto the platform are struggling with anxiety and depression right now right so that's that's where the chunk lies but of course the therapists the way they also look at it is try to understand what how they can uh, look at it from their perspective and what they can really do to help them so yeah uh talking about funding so are you bootstrapped or you have raised some funds to scale up nimblo we are very much bootstrapped right now i think uh, for us um our uh, month on month is quite uh, uh, uh significant in the sense we don't have a high burn rate so for us we are very much bootstrapped at this point of time and uh, what are your expansion and future goals especially what kind of therapists you want to onboard it because that's i think the key factor to have your users satisfied with whatever queries they are having and uh, how easy is the, to get some uh, some of the good therapists and also to retain them because again uh, because sometime back there were as i said that there are very few colleges who are actually training medical professionals on these things so again we have i mean a lot we need a lot of uh, such mental health care professionals we are short of them so how are you managing yeah so i i at this two parts to that in terms of you know how we're dealing with the therapists i think uh, shivantika has taken on a heavy role uh, in terms of actually taking up the responsibility to not just onboard but track the right sops for making sure we have the right folks uh, coming on to the platform and also upskilling them as we go in terms of their training in terms of how well they're able to perform on the platform um in terms of how we looking to expand so the way we see it is we don't see we see uh mimblu as a global company coming out of india within the mental health care space um why we say that is because um we understand that the quality of therapists that we have can not just service india but also other english speaking markets so we already have 20% of our users organically uh, without any sort of marketing efforts coming from outside of india uh you know speaking to our therapists and retaining on the platform so for us we feel very confident that you know we can target so many different other markets like you know the uae uh we have users from canada uh, us australia already onto the platform so what we building is very much a uh indian organization for the world uh, when it comes to mental health care as the first step to mental health care so that's that's pretty much what we building at this point of time and that's our vision for the next 5 years as we go uh uh as uh, we are just winding up any piece of learning you would like to share with the fellow entrepreneurs who are watching this interview today at uh, medi circle keep going <laughs> it's 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 never uh, a straight road it's uh, going to be lots of twists and turns uh, and we are still living through it so uh, by all means i am as much open to advice as uh, you are <laughs> 
So mm. that, that's the one thing I would say. Just just keep learning as you go. I think Shivanika would like to add something. Um, yeah, no, I would just say that, you know, I, I, I say this to clients and I would say to anybody else who's willing to listen that um, accomplishment is very little about motivation and a lot more about discipline. So when when working towards something, I think keeping the discipline element in mind is is very, very important. Great. Uh, just to, uh, to add one thing here that uh, uh, we were just talking about how... Uh, big is this market like the indian mental health care market it's expected to grow at a substantial chgr of 15% from 2022 to 2028 uh, there is uh, some concern here which i would like to share with you like the indian men, uh, mental health care market is expected to grow on account of the higher prevalences of mental disorders in states such as tamil nadu kerala telangana karnataka and other pradesh among others so uh, what's your take on that that Uh, people from these places are severely affected and there is a higher prevalence of mental disorders so have you experienced something in your user base i think see fundamentally is just access right uh, because in, in a lot of these uh, you know states and a lot of cities uh, i think a stat that you previously pointed out is india severely lacking in the number of therapists to the population ratio so for us what we're trying to do is bridge that gap right and we can bridge that gap in two ways one way is that you don't need to be you can be geographically agnostic i can be sitting in bombay speaking to my therapist based out of anywhere in the country or i can be sitting in you know a small city in telangana as you mentioned and i can still be getting a therapist from bombay you know so making sure that we have that and and the second part uh, you know to that is when therapists have more time they are able to service more clients which solves for that per uh, uh, you know uh, therapist per population problem right now therapists are very much bound to the number of hours they have in the day so if you know working say 6 hours or 7 hours in a day you can do maybe 7 or 8 clients at the max with mimblu currently therapists uh, are taking on anyway to 30 to 40 clients in their portfolio which they're managing and with they're managing that quite well as well so for us that kind of is solving problems but not just at one end but solving problems at both ends so that's how we're looking at it and additionally i think one statistic that really uh, you know pushed us and surprised us in the best way possible is that out of um, our users in india 60% of them come out of uh, tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 cities so that is giving us uh, you know a great push in understanding that you know the a there is a mental health Uh, epidemic within the country and be people are willing when given the option to embrace solutions it just has to be the right solution it has to be the right price point and there's be a lot of things that need to fit but there is willingness to adopt and you know that's pretty much uh, what really encourages us encourages us to keep building what we're building sure So thank you so much, uh, Shivanika and Yash, for joining us today for this healthcare startup series. As we are definitely experiencing a uh, mental health pandemic, uh, as India just revealed that there are as many as one ninety seven point three million people who are actually uh, suffering from different mental disorders. And as we just I uh, just asked about the uh, the main reasons. I mean, that is that. Uh, if the depression is also there, that includes around forty five point seven million people. who are experiencing depressive disorders and 44.9 million people with anxiety disorders now the situation has actually worsened due to this covid-19 pandemic and it has made this a serious world concern but yes definitely startups like mimblu and there are so many others who are uh, able to actually extend a helping hand and bring back people to their normal lives and come out of these mental health conditions thank you once again for joining it is what was a really pleasure talking to you. Thank you Smita thank you for your time Thank you for having us